Hi everyone, Helen London here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and currently in Melbourne we are in lockdown 5.0. We've had this five times before so it's basically meant there's time for a lot of reading as I stay in at home and try and keep as safe as possible. So you can see the book behind me which is the book that I'm going to review today. It's a hefty book, isn't it? Look at this. For those of you who are wondering, how many pages is that, Helen? Well, let me just tell you right now. It is 522 pages. However, don't let that scare you because the pages are quite thick and you do get through the story not quickly but it's readable <laughs> so the book i'm going to talk about is inside story by martin amos and it is martin's r recent book published last year by penguin random house and i have to mention that i have not read any of Martin Amos's books at all and the people that inspires him and he writes about in here especially the likes of Kingsley Amos his father uh, Saul Bellow and Philip Larkin the poet I've not read any of their work and so I tend to think that that has probably marred my experience of this book simply because I'm not aware of the works of the people that he was inspired with. However, I am aware of this bloke, Christopher Hitchens, who back in uh, the, when Martin was in his 20s, he met and have had a lifelong friendship. I've got most of um, Christopher Hitchens' books and his essays. I love his writing. Um, I think he's he was a brilliant man um, and so I think one of the reasons I bought this book was simply because Christopher my longtime crush was on the cover so what is this book about based on the fact as I mentioned that I have not read any of his books previously nor am I aware of all the people that he has been inspired with and their works. Well, this book is called a novel and it is pretty much a mishmash of, if you're thinking that is a, a novel written in the novel, it's not exactly that. It's a mishmash of different collections and situations in his life part of me thinks that some of them are real some of them are embellished in some way and when i was reading this book i thought to myself it's kind of like you know you grabbing imagine you grabbing a box of photos and all these photos have certain memories and are taken at certain times of your life and then somehow you stumble across a piece of carpet and all those photos fall on the ground and then you pick them up one by one and you recall a different story of that time and some of them might not be in order some of them might be embellished like i mentioned because your mind over the years has changed that that memory um and some of them might be real but ultimately as you're picking up the photos from the, the from the ground and you're recalling the stories there's some kind of linking of your entire life if that makes sense and that's the feeling I got from this book Martin introduces us to his life and he welcomes us into his home and he grabs our coat and he invites us to come in grab a drink and sit down where he then talks about those various elements of his life and they're somehow tied in with the people that inspired him everyone from him growing up with his famous writer father Kingsley Amos uh, also his 
inspiration with Kingsley's second wife, who was also a novelist, who then got him into writing as well. She's, she sounds fantastic. Uh, and also how he was inspired by the poet Philip Larkin, who, as I read the, his story, I really didn't... It didn't seem to be like a nice bloke. <laughs> uh, and a soul bellow who uh, the name rings a bell with regards to his writing. And indeed, I had to look through my own collection of books here at home. And I do have a book by Saul Bellow, um, the Augie March one, but I haven't read it yet, which I will do soon. And of course, his relationship with Christopher Hitchens, which I loved. And so what we get here is a collection of a mishmash of those little stories and snippets of memory pieces linked also by his thoughts about 9-11, his thoughts about French people, his thoughts about uh, Nazism, his thoughts about uh, terrorism, and also the different people that came into his life. And one of the biggest I guess influences or we get a story of his loves and right at the beginning we learn about Phoebe Phelps who his first love who was an escort and again the more I read about her the more I just think oh my god what kind of a character was she um you have to read the book to kind of see that Yes, he loved her, and yet she had her own demons that she had to deal with. And then years later, he meets her in her 70s. You've got to read the book. I don't know. And these are kind of the, the times where, as I was reading, I thought, is this real? Is this not? If, if I was someone's lover, a writer, and they wrote about me in this way for so long, would I be happy about this or not? Anyway, um, regardless, the the stories in here were really interesting in the sense that they made me think about, I really like the stories with Christopher Hitchens simply because it made me glimpse into the how that relationship worked what they talked about and I really look forward to reading this book every night because it kind of felt that I was an observer into the discussions between Hitchens and Amos and part of me was just kind of thinking it's kind of like still having Christopher Hitchens around if that makes sense and it gave you a glimpse of him as a person but yet at the same time I felt it wasn't really openly divulged which is which is okay. As a writer, you don't have to give everything. Um, it was incredibly sad, the story about uh, Hitchens and what Amos called the death watch. And there were a couple of times I started kind of tearing up as well because he portrayed, you know, when someone is going through a really tough time in their life, like cancer treatment, and many of us have gone through that, we're kind of recalling recalling those situations, the death watch, the um, kind of like the numbness that we have to go through, and this was just talked about in the book. Uh, look, the other parts of this book that I really liked was his chapters on writing, and you know me, a lot of people already know how much I've written and shared about this concept of working and sharing your work out loud. I love this concept of people sharing how they do things or the process of their work. And so um, Martin Amos sharing the process of how he writes was also very interesting. There was a, a chapter in this book uh, right at the end about the act of writing where he recalls a story where he was watching, along with his father, a documentary on TV about a poet going on his just normal everyday life and him being, I guess, very curious, not Martin Amos, but this poet, and then Kingsley Amos and Martin Amos having a laugh about this bloke being curiously, just continuously curious about life and them laughing about uh, this particular person 
And then Martin Amos having this revelation that, you know, to be a good writer, you need to be observant. You need to be of this world. You need to be continually curious about this world. And yeah, that particular, that particular chapter really honed in for me because it was relevant for me and something that I guess I'm in awe of writers who write really well and who are able to take part in the world but also remove themselves temporarily from the world and be able to write it in such a way that the rest of us when we read their words we can instantly get the emotion from it because we we see life being reflected back at us and so he had the knack here this is what he saw from this poet and that was one of the chapters that really honed in for me as i mentioned I've never read any of his books and I'm now thinking that I should read his books and maybe it would make more sense to me what he talked about in here. I loved his writing. I loved his descriptions of things. I loved the footnotes that sent us on little tangents which were reminiscent of what we really do in real life when we look at a photo and we recall a story that sets us off onto another story and another story. To me, reading this book was pretty much like someone talking about elements of their life and kind of putting it all together. Some of it made sense, some of it didn't, but you know what, that's, that's life, you know, <laughs> that's how we recount our stories. Um, but I, I'm not going to say I loved the book, it was compelling reading. It was just because I hadn't read any of the writers in here except for Hitchens, I really liked what Amos did with this book because it kept me interested. I really wanted to um, to learn more. I loved the little poetry snippets. I loved the little tangents. I loved the footnotes. And I loved the recollection of stories because that to me is life. Life doesn't have to be a nice fluid collection of one. It's bits and pieces and then the elements and the stories all kind of is how we make sense of things and yet we don't make sense. It's a very mixing review isn't it? But um, look I would recommend this book and uh, let me know what you think. Have you read any of Martin Amos's books? Which one should I start with? Anyway, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh, if you're thinking what my next book is, it's um, Graham Greene's Travels with My Aunt, which so far I'm in on chapter seven. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, now I'm going. Bye.